some of the examples of constructor chaining. Okay, even today we will continue with some more examples of constructor chaining. Okay, now as we told earlier, okay, the first statement of any constructor should be either super followed by parentheses or this followed by parentheses. Okay, if this starts so then the compiler will put a super followed by empty parentheses. The compiler can put only super followed by empty parentheses. The compiler cannot put <coughs> super with some parameters or this with some parameters or this with no parentheses. No parameters. The compiler can put only one thing, one is that is no argumented super. For any constructor, for any constructor, okay, the compiler will give for any constructor, the compiler will give super with normal parentheses, super with normals if it is not fine, if either super or this is not fine as a first argument, oh, sorry, first statement. And super followed by parentheses or this followed by parentheses, which is kept inside the code, should be the first statement. Here, <coughs> what happened is, first statement is system dollar dollar and the next statement is super followed by parentheses, which will be a compile time error. A super followed by parentheses or this followed by parentheses should be the very first statement of the constructor. Now, if somebody asks you like, can we call a constructor without using the constructor name? Can we call a constructor without using the constructor name? Yes or no? Yes. How we can call a constructor without using the constructor name? Either using super or this followed by parentheses, but we can call so only from a constructor. We can call super followed by parentheses or this followed by parentheses only from a constructor. We cannot call super followed by parentheses or this followed by parentheses from a method. Okay, just note it down like we can call a constructor using. <coughs> Super followed by parentheses or this followed by parentheses. <coughs> Only from a constructor. Only from a constructor. <laughs> We cannot call super color by parentheses or this follow by parentheses from a method. <coughs> we cannot call super color by parentheses or this follow by parentheses from a method. This will not be possible. Oh. Let's consider that <coughs> person has ID name. Now, let's consider this constructor. Let's consider this constructor. Okay? Now, will the compiler place super followed by empty parentheses for this constructor? Will the compiler place super followed by empty parentheses for this constructor? Yes or no? Will the compiler place Super followed by empty parentheses for the highlighted constructor. Yes or no? Will the compiler place super followed by empty parentheses for this constructor? Definitely it will place. Yes, because 
what i told if the first statement is <coughs> either super followed by parenthesis or this followed by parenthesis then only the compiler will not place this but it is not super followed by parenthesis it is super dot something this will not be considered a constructor column okay so <coughs> super followed by parenthesis or this followed by parenthesis is considered a constructor column just we are trying to refer the attribute of the super class using super dot id super dot id means it's trying to refer the person class attribute with the name id okay here super means it is a keyword which is used to access the super class members both this and super are keywords and this and super are non static reference variables <coughs> this and super are non static reference variables No, what what did you do? How it will behave? Just see the constructor. Just see the constructors and tell the output. How it will be? Huh? U1P2? U1E2. So, in the very first classes, or even in some of the latest classes, I told like after dot, if there is a parenthesis member, the compiler will consider it as a method. Now, in the super class, do we have a method named person? No, so it will be a compile time error. Okay. After that, if there is any parenthesis member, then the compiler will consider it as a method, not a constructor. After that, a reference variable dot some parenthesized member, a member with parenthesis. A reference variable dot member with parenthesis will be considered a method. <coughs> A reference variable dot a member with parenthesis will be considered a method. So super dot person with parenthesis will consider that it makes a call to the super class method with the name person. 
But in the super class, we don't have any method with the name person. Super class, we don't have any method in person, so it will be compatible. Right? But if I go like this, now if I go like this, will it compile? Yes, it will not be compiled just because without using new as a keyword, we cannot call constructors. We should not call constructors without the combination of new. We should not call the constructors with constructor names. <coughs> we should not call the constructors with constructor names without using new. We should not call a constructor with the constructor name without using new so if you are executing a constructor with the constructor name definitely it should be combined with new but if you are executing a constructor with super or this then new is not required if you are executing a constructor with super or this then new is not required but else if you are executing a constructor with the constructor name Definitely, we should combine that with new, otherwise, it will be a compiler error. Okay, fine. No. Now let us see how the initialization blocks are involved in constructor chain. Let me call. No. It's not required to have a string on the Just see what is output.
Which I have shown you in the object creation also. In the main method. Just I have created first a person class object and even an employee class object. What is the output? Tell the AB person and the AB employee for person class object creation, person class constructors are not executed. Before creating, did you tell like that? It was static installation block, no? <coughs> When the instance installation block is executed, when the object is created, right? When the person class object is created, then first what it will do, first object is created, then the remaining things will be done, and before executing the constructor, it will execute all the instance installation blocks of the class. Now, first the AV person is executed, then the constructor is executed. But before executing the constructor, <coughs> Before executing the constructor, then what it will do here, we should go for the person constructor which takes 10. First, actually, this constructor is being executed, right? As this constructor is being executed, it should uh, it should go to this place. But what happens from this constructor? For as a first statement, what we are doing, we are calling this of 10. So. In the present class, it will search for a constructor which could be able to take integer. So, it will come here and first p1 and then p2. So, for the first object, ib person p1 and p2. Now, for the second object, what happens means, okay, which constructor we are using to, uh, which constructor we are using to uh, create object, normative constructor. So, it should come here. From here, okay, it will come here to this constructor. Now, in this constructor, what are we doing? <coughs> we are calling again this of 10. So, from here, it will come to this constructor, and from here, what I am calling, I am calling this of 10. So, it will call here. Okay, now here, do we have any uh, super with norgments or this super followed by parentheses or this followed by parentheses? Do we have? No, so it will call super. Okay, and it will make a call to the super class constructor. Now, if it is calling a super class constructor, what it will do? It will come here. Again, it is calling the present class constructor. Okay, which takes 10. So it comes here. Now, from here, where it will go? From the person constructor with integer as argument, where it will go? Will it go to any superclass constructor? Yes. It will, from here, because of super followed by empty parenthesis which is kept by the compiler, it will go to the object class constructor. Now, in inheritance hierarchy, in inheritance hierarchy, for the first time when the control returns to the current class controller, 
for the first time when the control returns back to the current class controller from the super class okay for the first time okay for the first time when the control returns back from the super class constructor to the present class constructor for the first time when the control returns back from the super class constructor to the present class constructor at that time all the initialization blocks will be executed now <coughs> From where the control is returned back from the object class constructor to person class constructor? At which place? The control is returned back from the object class constructor to person class constructor. At which line? At this line, we are calling the object class constructor and the control is returned back. So, before executing the first statement, what it will do means it will execute the initialization blocks so first let me tell you in this first because of new employee first it will come here ok but before executing uh, because of uh, this this followed by parenthesis ok it will come here because of super followed by empty parenthesis from here it will come to the person class normal constructor from the person, because of this followed by parenthesis where we are sending 10, it will come here. And because of super with by followed by empty parenthesis which is kept by the compiler, it will go to the object class. Now, for the first time when it will reach, it will return back from the object class constructor. For the first time when it will return from back from the object class constructor, or uh, from where it will to where it will return back from the object class constructor, it will return back to 13th line. So, before executing the first statement of the constructor, all the installation blocks will be executed. Okay? So, in a chaining, in a chaining, the initialization blocks will be executed. The initialization blocks will be executed. <coughs> when the control returns back, when the control returns back, from the super class constructor. In the chaining, the initialization blocks ex are executed when the control returns back from the super class constructor. <laughs> now, just if that is the case, then tell the output. Just I told the theory, as per the theory, analyze the example and tell the output. The initialization block of any class will be executed when the control returns back from the super class constructor in the constructor scene. <coughs> That's what I told, and as per that, just analyze that and tell the answer.
So, what's the output? IB person? P1, P2? IAB? Just what I told you. Once again? That's wrong. I'll tell. Okay. Uh, what is the next answer? I okay. That's wrong. Again? Is there another answer? Okay. IB person P1 P2. That's fine. The next? IAB person P1, IAB employee, That's wrong. IAB person P1, 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 P1,
Okay? That's how the insulation valves are represented. While well, returning back, okay? While well, returning back from the super class constructor to the current class constructor, then insulation work is executed. So first, the output will be IOD, first one, and then after executing the insulation work, we will come to the constructor. Okay? P1, P2. That's the answer to the first one. Now, come to the second one. Hmm? So, what is the new? Let's come to the second object. Let's come to the second object. What is the second object? We are calling new object using normal person. So, it will come here. From here, what is the new? This one object then has a parameter. Then has a parameter. So it will this. Here what is it? <coughs> okay. It is there is no super power this. So what the compiler will do is the compiler will do this. The super will take the Okay. Now where it will go? Which constructor it will go? You go to the bottom constructor with power of the Now Again from here, because of this problem that I have where we have to take where I will go. And because of super just played by the compiler, again it will go to the architecture server. Now, when it is returning back from the super class constructor to the first time, again the insulation will be there. So again, again, I have the person. Okay. And next, what is the next step in the constructor? B1. And for where it is being called? So, C2. From where this is being called? From where this is being called? From employee constructor. But even here also, it is returning from the super class constructor to the first time. So, what is the Insulation down to So, I will be employee. Again, you can consider E1, E2. Okay. This should be a RPA person, P1, P2. And I will person, P1, P2. I will employee, P1, P2. That should find out this. And how we handle this? Understood? Like this. When the control returns back from the superclass constructor in the chaining, okay, the insulation blocks will be executed. Now, can we tell that the superclass insulation blocks will be executed for subclass object creation? Are the superclass instance insulation blocks executed for the subclass object creation? Yes. Superclass instance insulation blocks will be executed for the subclass of the Okay? Like that it will be. Superclass instance insulation blocks will be executed even for subclass of creation. Just now, I'm creating only employee class object. I'm creating only employee class object. Okay, and now in the employee class, I have a static insulation block. The 
అయితే ఇవి చూడాలి చాలా చూసుకోవాలి అయితే సో లీవ్ అబ్బుద్ది హియర్ వాట్ ఐమ్ డూయింగ్ ఈస్ ఐఎమ్ క్రియేటింగ్ ఏ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ టు ఎంప్లాయ్ క్లాస్ సి ఇన్ ద మెయిన్ మెథడ్ ఐఎమ్ క్రియేటింగ్ ఏ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ టు ఎంప్లాయ్ క్లాస్ యూజింగ్ నార్మల్ కన్స్ట్రక్టర్ ఓకే ఇన్ ద మెయిన్ మెథడ్ ఐఎమ్ క్రియేటింగ్ ఏ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ టు ఎంప్లాయ్ క్లాస్ యూజింగ్ నార్మల్ కన్స్ట్రక్టర్ సిన్స్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నాట్ డిస్ప్లేడ్ ఇన్ ద హోల్ స్క్రీన్ రద స్క్రోలింగ్ వీ క్యాన్ లివ్ లివ్ దిస్ జస్ట్ బికాస్ జస్ట్ వాట్ వీఆర్ డూయింగ్ ఇస్ వీఆర్ డూయింగ్ నథింగ్ జస్ట్ వీఆర్ క్రియేటింగ్ ఏ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ యూజింగ్ ఎంప్లాయ్ క్లాస్ నార్మల్ కన్స్ట్రక్టర్ now let's consider that if we are creating a object using employee class normally constructor now what is the output just not on output and the answer just if we are creating a object using employee class normally constructor what is the output <coughs> is output the sab person the sab employee and then only the instance installation block okay see if we create a subclass to the object sorry if we create a object to the subclass first all the superclass and the subclass static installation blocks will be executed then only the execution of instance installation blocks will be such a first all the static initialization blocks in the inheritance hierarchy will be executed only when we have not yet used that class for execution let's consider like if i created new person already we have used person class constructor for execution already if we have used person class for execution then what happens already for the first execution itself
okay for the first execution for the first object creation itself static installation block of person will be executed and the static installation block will be executed only once per execution so previously what we have done we have not created the person class object so what happened means directly uh, the static installation block if we see the previous example we go to the previous example let me <coughs> let me think that only we are creating an employee class object then what happens means okay the person class execution is done only because of employee class but now we are creating a person class object okay that means is the person class executed for the first time because of employee is the person class executed for the first time because of employee no okay it's individually executed so what happens means when the class is used for the first time then itself the static installation block is executed okay when the class is used for the first time then itself the static installation block is executed okay you need not to bother about the static installation block okay but in constructor training the instance installation block is more important how the execution will be okay but the static installation has static installation block has nothing to do with the constructor training but instance installation block will be executed as a part of constructor training okay now we are telling constructor training constructor training constructor training how we can define constructor training okay how we can construct define constructor training means executing the current class constructors and the super class constructors up to the object class no augmented constructor executing the current class constructors and super class constructor up to the object class no augmented constructor as a chain executing the current class constructors as well as super class constructors up to object class no augmented constructor as a chain is called as constructor chain <coughs> executing the present class constructors as well as super class constructors up to the object class no augmented constructor as a chain is called as constructor chain now why this constructor chaining is useful why we should have a constructor chaining why the constructor chaining is useful when we use the constructor chaining <coughs> let's consider like person has okay a constructor let's remove all these things all the new things let's consider like the person has a constructor the person has attributes id Name. ID and name. Now, let me have a person constructor. Which takes ID string name. Which has this dot ID equal to id this dot name equal to name okay now what we are doing in the constructor we are assigning some values to the attributes okay now even in the employee let's consider like the employee constructor yeah 
we have employee number we have employee number salary now let me remove all the stuff Okay. Now let's consider that I have created an employee object using employee number salary ID name. Now even employee has ID name employee number salary. Okay. Now if I give Let's consider if I give like this. Now, if we are creating an employee object, <coughs> just observe what we are doing. New employee object. The employee ID is handle. The employee name is Ravi. The employee number is one two three four five six and the employee salary is ten thousand dot fifty five. Okay, this is the employee information. But if I go for employee information, first what it is doing this dot id equal to id, this dot name equal to name. Do we have any attribute id and name local to employee class? No. From where these are inherited? From the person class. But what we are doing? We are setting the person class information in the employee class. Let's consider like there are 100 subclasses to person. What happens? In those 100 subclasses, we need to set the value of this dot id equal to id and this dot name is equal to name. That means we will become a boilerplate code to initialize the superclass members if we write that logic in the subclass constructors. If we write the logic of initialization of superclass members in subclass constructors. Will it come a, become a boilerplate code? Yes, definitely. Just because there might be any number of subclasses. In the subclasses, we can have any number of constructors. See, there might be any number of subclasses. In the subclass, we can have any number of constructors. If we write the code of initialization of superclass members in all the subclasses, in all the subclass constructors, then it is a boilerplate code. So rather than doing that, what the Java people have done is they have gone with the concept of constructor chaining. So, in the constructor chaining, what we call, we call a superclass constructor until object class normal constructor. So, rather than initializing them here, what I'll do is, I'll initialize only at one place. Then, just what I'll call is, I'll call the superclass constructor by changing name. So, it can be reused. This code can be cleaned up, it can be clean as well as it can be reused. This code will be clean as well as it can be reused. So, and at the same time, there are some instances where we can make it private. There are some instances where we can make it private. We should make it private as per encapsulation rules. Now, if you make it private, If you use this and if you make it private, will it be acceptable? No. So, for these obvious reasons, we don't initialize the superclass members in the subclasses. Okay? 
rather than initializing the superclass members in the subclass constructors what we do is okay what we do is we call the superclass constructors we call the superclass constructors how we call the superclass constructors now just rather than doing this here what i'll do is just i'll call the superclass constructor by sending the value of id to the value of name so the attributes of the superclass will be initialized only in the superclass constructor we can achieve the level of partition that's one advantage okay the superclass members will be initialized in the superclass subclass members will be initialized in the subclass that's that that's one thing we can achieve and we can avoid boilerplate code if you want to initialize the superclass members in the subclasses there might be any number of subclasses and as less there might be any number of constructors in the subclasses that means we need to every constructor we should do so but to avoid all these things the constructor chaining will be useful so that rather than initializing the subclass superclass attributes in the subclass we we'll execute the superclass constructors from the subclass using super so we can reuse the superclass constructor logic we can reuse the logic in the constructor of the superclass okay that's the basic advantage of constructor chaining reusing the superclass constructor logic now let's consider that yeah in the very first class of inheritance i told that multiple inheritance will not be supported in java for classes okay the interviewers will ask like why multiple inheritance is not supported in java Then I told like, okay. At that point of time, I told like, you could not able to understand if I discuss this at this point of time. I'll discuss it later, another time can. Just as per this analysis, why do you think that multiple inheritance is not supported in Java? Why do you think that multiple inheritance is not supported? Yes. Uh -huh. uh -huh. To avoid the ambiguities in the constructor chaining. Simply we can tell that to avoid the ambiguities in the constructor chaining. See, let's consider like if java supports multiple inheritance like class another and class employee now here the employee class constructor will have a normalized super which is provided by the compiler now both the person class as well as the another class has a if multiple inheritance is supported what happens Let's consider like if multiple inheritance was supported. It's not supported. Let's assume that multiple inheritance is supported. If we assume multiple inheritance is supported, then what happens? See, exchange person as well as another. Now what happens? Okay, uh, we have in the employee constructor we have super followed by empty parentheses which is placed by the compiler. Now, to which constructor it will go? Will it go to the person class constructor or another class constructor? Is a ambiguity. Just because. Both person class as well as another class has a normal constructor. So to avoid that ambiguity, multiple inheritance is not supported in Java for classes. 
Why multiple inheritance is not supported in Java for classes means to avoid the ambiguity in the constructor chain. To avoid the ambiguity in the constructor chain. To avoid the ambiguity in the constructor chaining, multiple inheritance is not supported in Java. Understood everybody? Understood? Understood? See, if we multiple inheritance is there, if multiple inheritance is there and super keyword with parentheses is available, then in C++, which class constructor is executed? I don't know about C++, I am asking you. In C++, if this is the case in C++, which constructor is executed? Let's consider like this is a program of C++. Will it execute another class constructor or person class constructor? I don't know. Just learn about that. Then you can get the answer. What's the difference? Okay. Understood? Everybody? I'm seeing some blank faces. If you are not getting means, I can explain once again. Is it required to explain once again? No? Understood? Okay. Multiple inheritance in Java is not supported just because Java supports constructor chaining. Okay? In order to avoid the ambiguities in the constructor chaining, okay, multiple inheritance is not supported. And multi level inheritance is supported. Multi level inheritance means, okay. At one level, employee is extending to a person. Another level, a permanent employee is extending to employee. So, this is multi-level inheritance. Person, employee to person, and permanent to employee to employee. This is called multi-level inheritance. Multi-level inheritance is supported. Multi-level inheritance means, there will be one class. One class is extending to another class. That class will be a super class to another class. Like this. Now, if you see this example, Permanent employee to employee, employee to person, person to object. So that is multi-level inheritance. Now, uh, because of multi-level inheritance, what happens? Permanent employee will be a subclass to person, permanent employee will be a subclass to object. Thus, how multi-level inheritance will be? Okay. Now, if a person class is a subclass to object, can we call Permanent employee as a subclass to object? Yes or no? Yes. Just because of at multiple levels the inheritance will be applied. So, person to employee and employee to permanent employee. So, at multiple levels the inheritance will be applied. It's not like inheritance will be applied only at single level. Inheritance can be applied at multiple levels. So, because of that reason, even permanent employee will be a subclass to person. Just because the inheritance will not be applied just to that level. See, some people think like only employee is a subclass to person, but permanent employee is not a subclass to person. But in fact, permanent employee also will be a subclass to person just because the inheritance will be applied at multiple levels, not even at a single level. Not only at a single level, the inheritance will be applied at multiple levels. Okay, so if employee is a subclass to person and permanent employee is a subclass to employee, definitely permanent employees will be a subclass to person. 
Just because the inheritance will be applied at multiple levels. This what multiple multi-level inheritance. Multiple inheritance is different and multi-level inheritance is different. Multiple inheritance means at the same definition if we extend multiple classes like at the same level if we extend with multiple classes then call it multiple inheritance. Multiple level inheritance means at a level we inherit with only one class but we have different levels in the inheritance. Person to uh, employee exchange person, permanent employee exchange employee. This is two different levels. But in turn, permanent employee will be a subclass to person. And this will complete inheritance. And the next object oriented programming concept is abstraction. Okay? Next object oriented programming concept is abstraction. Now, let's consider a very simple example. Let's write a very simple example. And let me write the main method. Let me save this class. Now we have, let's consider like, rather than making it shape, make it my shape. My shape, my rectangle. My circle. Just because already shape is there. in the library so rather than using that I shall use this I have a class my shape let's consider like this shape rectangle 
circle okay now let's return all of you know mathematics right remember what's the formula for calculating the area for rectangle What's the formula to calculate the area for rectangle? Return Length into Right? Now What's the area calculation? Since pi will not change from one circle to another circle, pi will value will not change. That I'll be changing. Wait for one minute. pi r square <laughs> pi into r into r so now at the time of shape at the time of shape let's consider like we have shape class at the level of shape do we really know what shape it is at the time of shape or at the level of shape do we know do we really know what shape it is <coughs> yes or no at the level of shape, we don't know what shape it is. Okay? And can we calculate the area without knowing what is the shape? Can we calculate the area without knowing what is the shape? Just because one shape has one formula to calculate the area. So, what we have done for each and every class, we have overrided the calculate area method. Just because each and every shape, rectangle will have one formula to calculate the area, and circle will have one formula to calculate the area so I have declared the method and I have overrided the method in the subclasses just because each and every shape will have its own formula to calculate the area <coughs> and so this kind of scenarios we use overriding just because by the default it will be something and for the specific specialized entity for the specific entity the formula may change for the specific entity the code may change so rather than changing the whole structure of the method whole syntax of the method what we'll do is we rather than changing the definition of the method we change the body of the method this is what called overriding this is why overriding is used okay if the superclass has one default behavior and the subclass has a specific behavior then rather than changing the method what we do is we make the method signature the same but method body different superclass will have some default behavior but subclass will have its own behavior in that case what we do is we override the method but at the class at the uh, at the level of my shape now do we have any concept of default area just think not don't think about the java application think in the mathematics perspective do we have any concept of default area no there is no concept of default area now <clears throat> if we don't know how to define the area if we don't know what is the definition okay we won't write the definition block okay we just declare the method if we don't know how to define the method then what we do is we just declare the method without defining it okay now what we have done did we uh, define the method did we give any method body here did we give any method body here no we did not give method body okay then if you want 
we can just declare the method without defining just because we don't know what is the definition for calculate area at the level of shape at the, le at the level of shape we don't know how to calculate the area if we don't know the definition then we won't define that method just we'll declare the method we don't know the definition method if you don't know the definition of the method we won't define the method just we declare the method but let me try to compile this what is doing sorry we did not give the data type in now error in writing abstraction demo sorry it's dot as slash classes okay what is doing missing method body or declare it as abstract okay if we just declare a method without definition then the method should be abstract if we just declare a method without definition then the method should be abstract either we should have a definition for the method or we should have the abstract keyword let's consider like if you are defining the method Now is the is abstract keyword useful? No. If we just want to declare the method without defining, if we just want to declare the method without defining, then the method should be abstract. Just see here we have a semicolon after the abstract method. Okay. If we just declare a method without definition, then the method should be abstract if we just declare a method without definition then the method should be abstract Okay. Now, let me try to compile this. This should be double. Sorry. Now, what I'm doing? What's telling? What's the error? My shape is not abstract, and it's not override the <coughs> abstract method. Where it is? Okay. Override the method calculate area in my shape. So, why it is giving me a compiler method means there is a rule in Java that if at least one method of the class is abstract, if at least one method of the class is abstract, then the class should be abstract. It is a rule in Java that if at least one method of a class is abstract, then the whole class should be abstract. the meaning of the word abstract is incomplete okay 
just the meaning of the word abstract is incomplete that means it's an incomplete one it's an incomplete entity it's not completed now this will be compiled successfully okay this was compiled successfully now let me try to create the object to my shape okay let me create an object to my shape okay now what's telling my shape is abstract cannot be instantiated what's instantiation means the process of creating the object is called as instantiation if object is instance if object is called instance the process of creating an instance is called as instantiation the process of creating the instance is called instantiation the process of creating an instance is called as instantiation and it's telling like my shape is abstract and can be not be instantiated a very very important point is it's impossible to create objects for abstract classes it's impossible to create objects for abstract classes <coughs> it's impossible to create objects for abstract classes Length is 10, breadth is 20 for the rectangle. Now, can you call like this? <coughs> can you use like this? Why? Hmm? You must use setters and getters. You must use setters and getters. But are we using the attributes outside the class? <coughs> it's a convention that you should use setters and getters. But are we really using the attributes outside the class? Are we really using the attributes outside the my rectangle or my circle? Are we using? No. It's a convention to use setters and getters. But it's not mandatory to use setters and getters for compilation. Now, what happens? Now, can I use abstract classes as reference variables? <coughs> Definitely, abstract classes can be used as reference variables. And at the time of compilation, the compiler will check what is shape. What is shape? The shape is of type myself. Please look here. At the time of compilation, the compiler will check. Okay, my shape shape equal to new my rectangle. That's fine. Now my rectangle is a uh, is not an abstract class, and we can create object for my rectangle, and it will come to that. What is data type of shape? It's my shape. Now can my shape refer to the object of my rectangle? Yes, just because my shape is a superclass to my rectangle. 
ओके इवन एब्सट्रैक्ट क्लासेस के दैट इज रेफरेंस वेरिएबल नाउ एट द टाइम ऑफ कंपाइलेशन इट विल चेक शेप डॉट कैलकुलेट एरिया डू वी हैव एनी मेथड इन द शेप विद द नेम कैलकुलेट एरिया विद नॉक्स डू वी हैव एनी मेथड इन द माय शेप क्लास व्हिच इज नेम्ड एज कैलकुलेट एरिया सॉरी मेथड नेम इज कैलकुलेट एरिया सो इट्स बेटर टू कॉपी एंड पेस्ट so do we have a method name calculate area do we have a method name calculate area in my shape just because we if we are using shape dot calculate area it will search the compiler will search for that method in the my shape now do we have calculate area with nulls in my shape yes even though abstract method it can be linked at the time of compilation even though it is abstract method even abstract methods can be linked at the time of compilation now at the time of execution what happens if i call shape dot calculate area the runtime environment will check to to which object the shape is referring to to which object shape is referring to to which object shape is referring rectangle now is there a method overriding in the rectangle yes so it will call this method and it will return 200 So, what happens? Can we call this as a polymorphic statement? Yes, yes. yes definitely. This will be a polymorphic statement. Definitely, this statement will be a polymorphic statement. Just because at the time of compilation, it is bind to calculate area of my shape, but at the time of execution, it is bind to the method of the my rectangle. So, this will be definitely possible. This will compile. At the time of execution, Java space abstraction. What's the output? It's two hundred. Just because ten into twenty will be ten into twenty will be two hundred. So it is giving the output as two hundred. Now let me not calculate the. Let me not define the calculate area. Now, what's the output now? If I'm not overriding the calculate area in my rectangle, what could be the output? Will it give zero or something else? Okay, the very rule is like, see now what happens? We have a class my shape. We have a class my shape. Now, is this method inherited to the my rectangle? Is this method inherited to the my rectangle? Yes or no? Yes. So this method will be as it is inherited to my rectangle. Let me comment. Let me keep it in comments. But it's actually inherited to my rectangle. Now what happens? Is the abstraction rule satisfied? Is the abstraction rule satisfied? No. What happened? We have abstract method in my rectangle, but my rectangle is not abstract. We have abstract method in my rectangle, but my rectangle is not abstract. Answer? Why is it compile time error? Now this will be a compile time error, just because there is abstract method in the class, but the class is not. abstract okay the class is not abstract now let me make the class as abstract no if i make the class as abstract will it compile successfully if i make the class as abstract will it compile successfully Yes, paka. Yes, just one minute back at all. We cannot create an object to abstract class. But my rectangle is abstract class. What we are doing? We are creating an object to my rectangle. Will it be compiled? Will it be compiled? No, it will not be compiled. Just because abstract classes cannot be instantiated. 
we cannot create object for abstract class we cannot create object for abstract class okay so it will be a loop where it will end and when it will end we cannot create object for my rectangle okay sorry we did not keep this is abstract sorry sorry after class we should not keep abstract first abstract then class first abstract then class that's a problem see what happens is my rectangle is abstract cannot be instantiated so what we need to do is rather than making abstract we have another way that we need to override the method if we override the method and give a definition to the abstract method see if abstract method is inherited to the class if abstract method is inherited to the class now we have abstract method inherited to my rectangle from my shape then to compile it we have two possibilities to compile that we have two possibilities one possibility is to make the class abstract just because we have abstract method one possibility is to make the classes abstract just because we have a abstract method the second possibility is to override that abstract method and give some definition to override the abstract method and give them definition now what i'm doing is i'm overriding the abstract method and giving some definition now will it be compiled yes or no yes definitely it will be compiled just because see we should do either of the two things we should do either of the two things when the abstract method is inherited to the class we can do either of the two things one is to make the classes abstract second one is okay to override the abstract methods we can do either okay we can uh, make the classes abstract and we can override the abstract methods but if you make the abs classes abstract what happens if you make the classes abstract then we can't create the object for the class so what we do is we write some definition to that abstract methods we write some definition to the abstract method by overriding the abstract method we write some definition to the abstract method by overriding the abstract method now we have abstract method calculate area please see here please see here we have a abstract method calculate area now what we are doing is we are writing some definition for the calculate area we are writing some definition for the calculate area so what happens is okay now we are overriding this abstract method if we have overrided method and inherited method which one will be considered overrated. definitely it will consider the overrided method only okay so we have two possibilities to compile to make the class as abstract or to override the method and give some definition but if you make the classes abstract we cannot create object to the class so what we do is we override the method and overriding a abstract method is called as implementation overriding the abstract method is called as implementation now we can call that we are implementing the calculate area of my shape just we can call that here in my rectangle we are implementing the calculate area of my shape and even implementation will check for all the overriding rules implementation will check for all the overriding rules Can I give you a method in the 
Hmm? The, as we go on, we'll discuss all the things. Okay? So, either we can make the classes abstract or we can implement the method to compile that. But if you want to make the classes abstract, we can make the classes abstract. <coughs> if you want to implement that method, we can implement that. Either way, we can compile application. But we, if you use the first approach, then we cannot create the object to my rectangle. So, we implement something. Now, let's not implement that. If you are not implement that, what happens? If I am not implementing this, what happens? Will, will it give a compile time error? Yes, it will give a compile time error. Now, I am forcing, am I forcing my rectangle and my circle? Am I forcing my rectangle and my circle to implement calculate area? Am I forcing my rectangle and my shape, sorry, my rectangle and my circle to implement calculate area? Are we doing that? Are we forcing? Yes. We are forcing that if you want to make use of my shape or my, uh, if you want to make use of my shape, you should implement calculate area. We are enforcing. We are enforcing that if you want to use of my shape, definitely you should implement calculate area. Such kind of enforcement such kind of rules and regulations can be set through abstraction. Such kind of enforcements or rules and regulations can be set to the subclasses through abstraction. Through abstraction what we can do is we can enforce the subclasses or we can set some rules for the subclasses. Using abstraction what we can do is, we can enforce or we can set some rules for the subclasses. Now, what is the rule that we are setting for my rectangle and my circle here? We are setting a rule that if you want to be qualified as a shape, if you want to be qualified as a shape, then definitely you should have, then definitely you should have some formula to calculate the area. Now, here, I am enforcing my rectangle and my circle that see my rectangle and my circle will be qualified as a shape only if they extend to my shape. Understood? And then my rectangle or my shape will be qualified as a shape only if when if they extend to my shape. But if they extend to my shape, what I am doing? I am enforcing some rule that if you want to be qualified as a shape, then definitely you should have some formula to calculate the area. Understood? Just I am enforcing. Okay? I am enforcing such kind of rules through abstraction. That is the basic purpose of abstraction. We can enforce some rules to the subclasses. Now, what is the rule that I am enforcing here in this case? Any shape, if it wants to qualify as a shape, it should extend to my shape. But if it wants to be qualified as a shape, first it should have a formula to calculate the area with it. That's what I am enforcing. That kind of things can be done through abstraction. <coughs> and there are several things to be discussed in abstraction. Okay? That we'll discuss in tomorrow's class. Tomorrow's class, first we will start with abstraction and there are lot many rules in abstract classes that we will discuss in depth and then we will discuss about a small concept named final. Final will be a keyword and why final will be used, when final should be used, where final should be used. Once abstract is completed, then we will discuss final and once final is completed, we will discuss about interfaces.
while how interfaces will be used. And tomorrow, most probably, abstract classes and interfaces will be completed. Okay? And I, I forgot to tell one thing like, the next concept will be on packages. Okay? How, what are packages and why packages are used? And once the package is completed, then we can switch to exception handling. Tomorrow's class will be the same time, 6. Okay? Yes, if it is 6 means, try to assemble at 6. Okay? We are wasting at least 15 minutes a day, which should not be. So, if it is 6, try to assemble at 6.